Uh, my livestock's my living, my life. It's hard to describe what livestock mean, yeah? And you're brought up with animals, caring for animals, so they mean a lot. Peter and Animals Australia are using shock and awe tactics to destroy farmers' lives and farming industries. Molong is a rural town in central western New South Wales and it is um, a small town of about 1,500 people. Farming would be the biggest enterprise around here. My name is Andrew Mitchell. My family's been on the place for 40 years. Sheep are critically important to our operation here and we wouldn't be able to run the place uh, as efficiently and profitably as, um, as we could without them. I haven't always been a farmer. I was uh, a vet for nearly 10 years uh, and I have been back uh, on the farm for the last few years. Our sheep are shorn once a year. These animals that are producing the wool uh, are very well treated and uh, they have a great life. They're shorn for three minutes out of, the, out of 12 months and the rest of the time they're out in the paddock. They have very, very little stress in their lives. There is no humane way to use animals for food and clothing. So farmers who are using animals for financial gain uh, do not have the right to um, ignore or in some cases actually allow animal cruelty to take place. My name's Claire Fryer and I am campaign coordinator for PETA Australia. Shearers are paid by volume, uh, which encourages rough work, encourages quick work and it encourages a lack of concern for the sheep. In 2014, there was a video expose released of um, some very severe abuse in the Australian wool industry and showing systemic abuse of sheep by shearers. During the investigation, uh, the investigators did not see anybody reprimanded for the abuse and no amount of fluff by industry can hide the fact that sheep are abused for their wool. With any industry, there's going to be uh, a small, small minority of people who don't do the right thing and I think uh, shearers in general wouldn't like to be tarred with the same brush. We've had this particular shearing team uh, come here for a long time and I've never once witnessed a an act uh, like we saw on the videos. As a veterinarian I see uh, sheep shorn from a farmer's eyes and also from a veterinary perspective. The sheep aren't any, in any undue stress uh, from the shearing process. Sheep receive cuts uh, from shearers during the shearing process and this does happen, but they are superficial and sheep have an incredible healing ability and I see no mortalities and I see no extensive signs of pain. And I think I speak for all farmers that if they saw shearers mistreating animals, then they wouldn't stand for it. If I saw shearers behaving like that towards animals, that shearer wouldn't return to the shed. I have visited a shearing shed. I, of course, am a vegan. I don't believe animals are ours to use and uh, I personally do not like the treatment of animals while they are being shorn. It's no surprise that our campaigns will upset farmers and others who are using animals for financial gain. So Jonah Weinhofen is a vegan musician who has taken part in um, our wool campaign, asking people to leave wool out of their wardrobe. That campaign was launched earlier this year and it has caused much debate, of course. Yeah, that's fairly brutal looking. It's not much of a sheep though. My name's Tim Crudgett, I've been shearing since 1981. We try and be as gentle as possible. If you hurt them, they play up and it makes the job harder. It's just counterproductive. I mean, it'd have to be an absolute raw learner that it'd even do something half that bad. How many years have you been in the shearing game? Under Bruce? 30 years. You, you would never have seen a I've sheep seen, like that. I've never seen something like that before. No. Not Maybe ever. a dog attack or something? Yes. Mm. It just disappoints you to think that someone that doesn't really know is trying to put their point across and, um, and it's not right. I understand they don't want sheep or any other animals hurt, but we're not here to hurt them either. I think we've got to look after the sheep well. If you don't do that, then we're in trouble. We're in trouble because our sheep don't perform and we don't make any money. And, and I mean, that's our heart and soul. Heart and soul is looking after our stock. We wouldn't be doing it. <laughs> you ask a lot of guys that don't make any money out of, out of their farm anyway. Rose! My name's Dougal Campbell. I'm a farmer at Grazier. As a farmer, I totally understand Peter wants to do the right thing. In their idea, they're thinking they're doing the right thing, but in actual fact, they've done an incredible amount of damage to 
how people perceive us and how uh, the farming community operates. What's at stake is the farming community's livelihood, not just us as farmers, but the whole community. There's, there's hundreds of thousands of people could be really enormously affected. Unfortunately, though, when you take these, this stance and, and you vilify an industry, you're, you're bringing down the whole industry. You're not bringing down those bad eggs. You're bringing everyone down to that same level. It's not in their interest to be telling you all the truth because the truth won't get them donations. It won't get them airtime. And more often than not, the truth is, is pretty mundane. But that, as I said, that doesn't get you column inches and it doesn't get you things on four corners. The fact that these things were happening in Indonesia needed to be brought to light. You can't sit by and say that any of that footage was acceptable because it wasn't. But any other livestock industry in this, in this country that didn't look at that as a wake-up call and start looking at their own practices is behind the times. And they will suffer the same fate, unfortunately. As much as we would uh, like to be able to just sit down and, and discuss the issues um, without having those um, eye-catching campaigns. The reality of it is that we do need to raise awareness and these campaigns do exactly that. We don't say all men are bastards because some abuse women. We don't do that and we can't do that in the animal rights industry. It's not fair. My name is Sophie Love. I'm a writer, farmer and marketer from the mid-north coast of New South Wales. I do understand the vegan take on life because I was a vegan for over 20 years. I think Peter is really badly named. They seem to be vegans against anybody who eats meat, uses meat, kills animals or uses them for fleece or flesh or eggs or whatever. Vegans who sit on their high horse and I'm holier than thou because I don't use any animal products. I think they're so disconnected from actually where their food and their clothes come from. There is a disconnection. If you live in Sydney, why, most people, why would they need to come bush? I mean, why would they need to understand where their, how their steak gets on the table or how their lamb chop gets on the table or how, how their bread gets into the kitchen? How, how would they need to understand as long as they get it? For most people who are carnivores, they go into a supermarket, they see banks of refrigerated food that they have no idea where it has come from, where was it killed, how humanely was it killed, and yet when PETA or Animals Australia do the, oh my goodness, the terrible abuses in abattoirs in Indonesia, those same people who have no idea where their food has come from in Australia jump up and down and demand that a trade be shut down. There is no humane way to slaughter animals used for food and unfortunately this is a market industry for financial gain and it's the animals who suffer as a result. It was so provocative to say here's the rest of your wool coat. It was just a blatant lie that is being propagated as the truth about an industry. Some of the information that is uh, put forward in some of these campaigns, there is little doubt that it is misleading and deceptive by reference to the Australian Consumer Law and that if someone wanted to take issue with that and, and commence an action, they would be able to. Well, Peter obviously is very sure of the information that we put forward. The allegations made were very serious, as the RSPCA did in fact confirm. Peter was actually contacted by the Shearing Contractors Association of Australia and they did ask us for advice on what we thought they could do to improve conditions for sheep. We advised that um, compulsory drug testing for shearers and also uh, surveillance cameras present in all sheds. These have not been measures which have been introduced by industry. I think drug testing shearers is a fantastic idea. 
I think drug testing drivers is a great idea. None of us should be doing anything that we're doing while we're high on drugs. Rather than having cameras, isn't it better that we have an industry-wide agreement that there is zero tolerance for any form of animal abuse? Wouldn't that be the best case outcome? With regards to PETA, is I think that their thoughts on um, the wool industry is unrealistic and uh, I think that they are sending an, an, a false message to the general public. We're not out here there to do anything harm to anybody, we're just trying to do our job and feed feed and clothe the community yeah, and, make a, and make a living, try and make a living anyway. That I'd love Peter to come out on an honest way and come and have a look at what we do. Unfortunately, when, when you attack one industry, like the wool industry, you'll get collateral damage and there are others in the supply chain who will be affected, you know, for instance, wool classes, real estate agents, stock and station agents and people in these small communities that are supported by the wool industry. These animals are not ours to use, they're not ours to use for financial gain, they're not ours to exploit and they're certainly not ours to abuse. As long as animals are being abused for their wool, the campaign will not be over. <laughs>